Anhydrous oxalic acid is commonly used as an esterification and complexation agent. It readily reacts with primary alcohols like methanol and ethanol. It can also complex with many metals, but it forms especially strong bonds with iron, lanthanides, and platinum. It can form an addict with urea too. However, this strong bonding also makes it susceptible to hydration. Luckily, there is a very easy way to fix that. The only material you'll need is oxalic acid. The first thing we need to do is determine whether we have the dihydrates or anhydrous form. A simple way to test is to apply strong heating. The oxalic acid soon begins to melt and exude water, crystal clear evidence that we have the dihydrate. To find the most efficient dehydration method, I'm going to try a few. The first is a simple distillation. As I try to pack the chunky oxalic acid into my flask though, it takes way too much effort that it just isn't worth it. Plus, any caking would make it near impossible to reasonably extract. Next, I'm going to try a heating dish. I first weigh it empty to get a baseline value. The weight is 1,195 grams. Add a little less than 2 pounds of oxalic acid, raising the weight to 1,976 grams. I start around some and poke holes to allow water to better escape. Finally, I put on my hot plate with a cloth over it to prevent contaminants from getting in. I set my hot plate to around 130C, accounting for the ceramic's slow heating and thermal loss. 30 minutes later, I toss it a bit to prevent caking and allow more oxalic acid to be exposed to heat. I spent over 3 hours doing this, even shrinking the intervals to 20 minutes, but I ended up dehydrating nothing. For my next trick, I try to dehydrate the oxalic acid by vacuum. Contrary to what you see, I promise you it is not filled up, not even a tenth of the way. I've actually spread around 260 grams of oxalic acid around the walls of the flask. I heat it up to 130C and turn on the vacuum. After 30 minutes though, it was a bust too. The downside from these methods was that it actually made my oxalic acid chunkier than before. I'm actually tempted to just chuck this and get a new bag, but I didn't want to wait another 5 days. So I got to grinding. Oxalic gas is already pretty irritating to breathe even if the granules get in the air, so you definitely want to wear a wet mask or something against the powder. Eventually, I get three portions of 260 grams of oxalic acid. The third one is actually used in the first test run of this final method, and I got pretty good results. I'll show you how. First, I lay out some parchment paper in a wide pan. While acid can't destroy it like aluminum foil, it can absorb water, making it the perfect choice. I pour out one of my portions and spread it around. It is extremely important to get as thin as possible while also disturbing the top. The more surface area there is, the more efficiently water can leave. I put this in the oven at 105C for 105 minutes. Upon removal, volatilized oxalic acid will create a very irritating area. This can only be aired out, so make sure there are windows and no people nearby. I tried baking it off before, but it doesn't do anything. After cooling, I remove the foil protector. It already looks very dehydrated. I carefully grab the oxalic acid like a taco and pour it in with the test run portion. Those little cakes you see there can be easily broken with a soft squeeze. It's like talcum powder. Once I finish dehydrating all three of my 260 gram portions, I weigh it. The ideal weight is 557 grams. Minus the bag, I have around 552.6 grams of anhydrous oxalic acid. That is approximately a 99.2% yield. This is the method used in organic synthesis, and there is no doubt it is the best.